Hello and welcome to Secure Network Design and Defense course. My name is Deep Ramanayake and in this our first chapter, Introduction to Networks and Security, we will be talking some of the overall uh, objectives that I'm expecting from this course. Again, remember this course is designed as a project-based course and it will be, uh, there will be assignments that you should work as a uh, work with the team to get the best, best experience out of this class. Also, uh, throughout the class, we will be learning um, to how to build a secure network. So most of the classes you probably have taken, uh, uh, you've learned some of these technologies, but more, many of the times I've seen that a lot of students will not get the opportunity to build a fully functioning network. So the, my focus is going to be, while we're learning the defensive technologies in this class, we will also, in each module, uh, from starting from module two, we'll be building our own network and 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 make sure we are securing them. So you will get a good hands-on learning experience throughout the course. Uh, so uh, this chapter, let's jump in, and then we're going to look into um, some of the basic um, network security concepts. So you probably have learned some of these uh, from your networking class and security classes. Uh, so I'm hoping it's going to be a kind of review for you guys in this uh, first chapter. Uh, if you have any questions, um, you feel free to. I will include my email somewhere in this uh, course. So if you have any questions, recommendations, uh, improvement, uh, I would love to hear from you uh, throughout the course. So before we jump into the objectives, I want to re remind you guys, um, I do have on my course an uh, introduction at the beginning. There are some of the technologies I'll be using throughout the course to build our network. Uh, the ones I'm using is VMware. You could use VirtualBox or any other virtualization software like Hyper-V, all of them should work. Uh, I will be using Palo Alto firewalls to set up our firewall. Uh, and then I'll be using Microsoft Server 2012 and Windows 10 on our internal domain. And DMC, we will be using um, open source Linux, Linux distribution for the class. Again, I will include links to where you can download this. Um, and how to set up and there will be a lot of instructional videos hands on how to how to videos how to set up your networks again now again if you do not have access to this if you're going through a class most universities will have a academic partnership with this organization so you can ask your professor or ask your school uh, if they can provide you with this uh, software to help you building the network if not uh, you could be also using the the open source firewalls um, uh, for an example you could download uh, some of the free ones from Sophos and a few other. Uh, look online for like few other links. Again, I will provide some of these links when we go actually building these networks. So you can download them. Uh, but if you go to the industry, most of the places will be using Cisco product or Palo Alto. Uh, so it's good, it's good uh, to learn some of these technologies. But if not, most most of these uh, firewalls and all the other technologies have come some common. Um, groundworks that you should be if you know one of the ones you should be able to figure it out the on uh, the other types of the products again just to let you guys know the some of the things that I'll be using so let's jump into the objectives um, so we'll be looking at uh, some of the common vulnerabilities to the network so we'll go on look in them like there are a lot these days right but we are just gonna look and we'll focus on some of the common vulnerabilities because we before we defend the network we need to think like a hacker we need to know what are the ways that hackers are hackers are using to exploit our network. So it's good to know some of the common vulnerabilities. Okay, and we'll look at some of the common goals of network security. Right, we're gonna build a network, so we need to look about some of the goals before we even jump in and de uh, deploying and developing the network. So again, you will get some of the project management skills uh, if you have never had uh, through your. Uh, at school, uh, you will learn some of the project management skills because you will work on a team uh, at um, working on a proposal as well as the hands-on objective. So I'll post I'll post some of the information. So for example, the first chapter here, uh, I'm going to give you guys, hey, get together with your team and use some of the project management tools that you're going to use throughout the semester. Uh, for example, I always suggest my students to use some kind of online platform you have. Uh, you can use Microsoft Project or some of the online um, free open source tools to keep track of your project. Uh, kind of like a Gannett chart that if you have ever used them, uh, create your goals and milestone for the project. That's going to help you throughout the semester. So for an example, the final project is a project proposal that you are presenting to me. So it's good to have breakdown. If you're, if you're working on a 16-week semester class, it's good to break down those uh, 
goals and lay out the project outline that I'm going to give you so that you can use that uh, to build uh, upon your project. Okay. Uh, so that's a little bit about the project and then again uh, we'll go back and here uh, look at the network goals and then we'll discuss the best approach when you're designing a secure network. Right, There's multiple ways uh, uh, based on experience you can approach it but we'll look into some of the basic technologies that you could use. So the network that we are building is a uh, small scale but most organizations will follow the same structure when they're building the network. You will have a common firewall, you have multiple zones. Uh, for example, a service network, most people call this a demilitarized zone, DMC zone. I like to call it a service network. And then you will have internal network. So we'll look into those um, later when we actually start building the network. But these are some of the basic designing approach that you want to look into it. Okay. And then, I, like I mentioned, I already mentioned, uh, some of the project outline will go over it. Um, I'll pull up my project outline that I want you guys to go over it and we'll go over that uh, project outline at the end of the um, lecture so you have a pretty good idea of what's the uh, what's the goal of the project I'm ex expecting from you. So before we even jump in and looking about building our networks, you need to understand how to effectively implement and maintain secure networks. It is important to understand for you some of the common vulnerabilities, threats, and um, threats and exploits available today. So it's harder to keep track, right? If you know, if you follow news articles, you know there are so many threats. Threats um, happens every week. So one of the easiest way, one of the ways I keep uh, track of all these new threads is uh, subscribing, subscribing to some of the news articles and uh, threads. Uh, one of the ones I suggest you use too is the US CERT, C-E-R-T. Google that, you can subscribe to their mailing list. Every time there's a common threat, vulnerability, so exploit, they will, you will get an email notification. So it's easy for you to keep track of some of these vulnerabilities. But uh, if you look into what are the common threats, if you look into what are some of the surveys uh, done recently, you will find the data theft is one of the common, right? Uh, for an example, on a university, maybe you are after intellectual property and that doing on a research university, or if you think about it, so much financial information available on a, a university network. You have your employees, you have students, staff, and faculty, and there's a lot of uh, personal identifiable information available on uh, on a university network example uh, but there are many other organization private organization government organization so the data is one of the biggest um, uh, theft uh, on the uh, on networks these days because uh, because the financial gain right so you can uh, steal um, personal information or intellectual property and sell on maybe on black market so data theft uh, as big common vulnerabilities to the networks these days. Uh, also, we know about the ransomware attacks, right? Oh, you, if you can't get, get access to the data, the ransomware attack to encrypt your data, uh, that goes into the malware type of category, right? So we, you know, there's m multiple different of malware attacks uh, uh, through social engineering, like, right, we're getting phishing emails, uh, we max and click on a link that, uh, go to an infected website, you download malicious uh, software onto your system and those uh, malicious software might be talking to a command and control server and downloading and maybe there are advanced persistent threats that goes on throughout the networks that um, if the hackers uh, stay on your network persistent for a long time, hide without making uh, too much noise, trying to literally move and gather as much information as you can. Another common threat to the uh, organizations are the inside intrusions, right? We know that uh, maybe inside malicious, inside employee leaking your information or uh, this disgruntled employee leaving uh, your uh, organization maybe got fired but he still have access to the uh, company resources and I said that not properly handled or discontinued that they might be using those information to um, uh, use their use that take that information and leaked online. So again, there are many multiple common threats. Uh, I would consider these are some of the common threats to the today's networks. Again, like I said, keep up to date with uh, some of the common threats. Subscribe to some of the mailing list. As you, as a security professional, this is the fun part of our job, right? We get to learn new things. We need to keep up with up with what's going on we need to be a step ahead of the attackers so we can protect our network so again 
learning new technologies keep up to date is must on this industry let's now focus on some of the common network vulnerabilities our network consists of multiple different devices uh, and people and processes right uh, for an example design flows and operating system we know modern operating system has billions and billions of codes uh, on their system so it is easy to make a mistake uh, vulnerability available on system so what are the ways that uh, computer vulnerability has been exploited it's depending on the motivation of the attacker motivation of the vulnerabilities available because we know most systems are left alone on patch even though there is a uh, patch for vulnerability in operating system most flows that are based on your IT staff didn't realize there was a patch and was not being updated properly uh, there are individual programs that are running on systems that are vulnerable. We know that common vulnerability, if you have taken a pen testing class uh, for FTP, like we've seen so many vulnerabilities on the, that, the specific FTP application available to outside uh, on an open port, and that application has a vulnerabilities that can be exploited to gain access to the system. Uh, so those are some of the design flaws on operating system and there's a design flaws you don't properly configure your networks, your firewalls and other devices uh, or the multiple devices available on network. So if you don't uh, properly configure them, properly patch them, uh, those can be uh, types of network vulnerabilities. We know there are vulnerabilities on hardware and some of the vulnerabilities are built into the firmware that's not been uh, properly patched on there is no patch like I mentioned these can be exposed uh, to the outside party for an example maybe you have insecure Wi-Fi access uh, uh, Wi-Fi access point that pro uh, not properly configured uh, or maybe a firewall that's not properly configured that uh, uh, that can be exploited uh, by an attack outside so we talked about operating system vulnerabilities and you probably have you know there's many operating system vulnerabilities does not pertain to Windows, it can be Linux, uh, Microsoft Mac, OS, there's multiple operations, they all have their own weaknesses and vulnerabilities that are being exploited. So what are the human vulnerabilities? This is, we know, the weakest link on many organizations, right? Uh, human element is the one that, uh, as we humans, that we make common mistakes. If you're not properly trained, uh, uh, for an example, on a phishing email, you might uh, click on a on link malicious link we as we mentioned before and uh, you might expose some of this sensitive data okay so again yeah so make sure the human vulnerabilities is another common uh, vulnerabilities you need to think about when you're building and securing your networks what are the process vulnerabilities mm, this can be created by a specific process right or a lack of a process that are not properly configured an example can be uh, you organization might have password but you might be using you might not practicing proper password practices uh, not using secure passwords uh, letting users using common uh, passwords or maybe not using a uh, process that, such as maybe two-factor authentication right those are the things that might be fall under the process vulnerabilities again there are like we said there are more uh, vulnerabilities to the network these are like this can these categories can lead into multiple other vulnerabilities so this is kind of like a common um, uh, 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 common vulnerabilities letting you know you probably know about this you probably have exploited exposed uh, exposed to uh, different types of vulnerabilities uh, on your other classes but this is a quick uh, overview of some of the common network vulnerabilities so we now we have talked about some of the common security vulnerabilities and uh, common threats to the network. Let's focus a little bit on the basic network structure. As you begin this journey with me, you need to uh, keep in mind that you need to understand the network environment. For you to be able to defend network, you must thoroughly understand the network architecture. And it is important as you, as a network analyst or whatever the role that you go into, if you have a good foundation of how organizations build their networks you will have a good idea about not only how to protect defend also to fine-tune and make sure uh, you fix the gaps so that's the reason that why I decided to really include this class for us to build our own network so if you look into most modern organization networks they might at least have three legged networks which means they will have a external facing uh, 
devices, they will have internal devices, and they will have a service network that mostly going to be you uh, have servers such as your web out out facing web servers, email servers, and sometimes you might have databases in this network. So, so make sure you understand. Uh, Make sure you know the proper networking terms. I'm sure you have familiar with this. You've learned on your networking class, uh, typical network organization structure. So, and you should be aware of some of the tools and uh, you can use uh, especially troubleshooting and for network security. So also you probably look into segmentation and monitoring. We'll get into that later. So uh, you can uh, divide most network into two segments, the physical devices and logical devices. Uh, you'll probably find on the physical devices, uh, your switches, routers, firewalls, uh, what are the intrusion detection systems and cabling. Those are kind of going into the physical category. And you also make sure you understand the logical uh, logical aspect of the network as well. There's a lot goes into the logical side as well, especially if you have learned into software defined networking, you know how we combine uh, software and hardware uh, combined together to achieve better, better traffic control, better filtering on software defined networks. But make sure you understand the basic packet structure, okay? Again, this is important because after you build the networks, you need to see what traffic goes on. You need to be able to dissect a packet and see, identify the information in there, maybe using Wireshark. Make sure you understand five tuple, uh, source IP, destination IP, source MAC address, destination MAC address, all the protocols, very important to understand the different protocols. When you look at a packet, you need to know what kind of packet it is by basically looking at, maybe looking at the protocols. Make sure you understand the OSI model. Okay, very important for us. These are some of the refreshing because I'm not gonna cover detail into all this stuff. For an example, OSI model, should be, you should be familiar with the application layer, what protocols are on application layer transport layer, what's the benefit, what's the purpose of the transport layer, right? Making end-to-end -end, end -to -end connections and you need to be uh, understand the networking layer, what's happening on the network layer, routing, IP addressing, okay? And the data link layer, okay? Uh, like you need to even think about, especially when we come into security, what are the security, where we can apply security in all these different layers? Should we apply the data link layer or application layer, okay? Also the physical layer, right? We need to know about the devices are uh, available on the physical layer. So make sure you're familiar with all these things because uh, when you're building the network, if you don't have, like I said, the ground basic uh, foundation of the networking, network is the heart of security. Make sure you have a good, solid foundation graph of the security. Also then, uh, some of the basic network utilities you should be familiar with. Uh, because we, we need, when you're building the network, we need to troubleshoot it. Like let's say I cannot talk to another devices on the network. You need to know, hey, I can use the ping utility to make sure I get a reply back from the other devices. When you set up the DNS servers, to make sure the name resolutions are working properly. So you should know how to use N NSLOOKUP. Next style. Okay, all of these basic network utils will, I'll go when we're building, I'll talk about them a little bit, but make sure you are familiar with some of these devices. Uh, I will have a laid out diagram for you guys to look at the end of this uh, chapter uh, related to the network that we're gonna build in. And we'll talk about layering in there as well. Okay, let's now focus on a little bit on what we need to protect, right? So we are defending network, but first, first of most, we need to know what are the information, what are what are we trying to protect from intruders, okay? If you read in the book, there are three different aspects the book discuss about uh, needing to protect on. First one is the data, right? Data itself that need to be protected. Data uh, can be categorized into two different areas, data at rest, which are means like for an example, let's say you have a database that's been, uh, data being saved on a specific database. And the other area is the data in motion, right? These are the data, like let's say again, let's take the same example. If you are accessing the information, uh, well, let's say web application accessing information on the database, so now the web application need to talk to the database, so that's, that then the data has to come through the network as packets and those are the data uh, in data in movement, okay? So we need to make sure we talked about data and how to protect it and how to defense against attacks when it's leaving your network or when the data at rest. So we will discuss later in the chapter what are the technologies that we can use to protect the data, encrypting and giving the least privilege, only the people who have access to the data 
uh, give only the like for an example if you need to only give read access that's the only access you give for a specific user so the next one is the people right people always pose a security uh, threat to our networks we know it's one of the weakest link for the most organization uh, but this can be uh, based on ignorance or maybe um, people are not trained well to identify malicious activities and phishing emails or it can be a basic a simple error as we human also make an error so these are so we need to consider about we need to protect the people we need to properly train them and what are the other devices the other aspect is the network right there are a bunch of end devices on a network there are many millions of connection points so we need to think about if it's a firewall if it's intrusion detection system any other devices where should we pay where should we place these devices how should we protect them from the attack what are the steps that we should take to defend these devices from attack so maybe you need to look into system security and you need to look into these end devices as well so while we are again building the networks we look into some of the uh, steps that we can take to protect uh, all these different devices on our organization's network okay we did talk about the threats to the network but i want to focus here a little bit more on how we can evaluate the likely threat to a network right so we need to foremost think about like hey what are the what are the ways that what are the what are the threats to our network so there are two different types of people right if you know we talked about this uh, you might have heard the word um, proactive versus reactive uh, measures that you can take against the network attacks right some some net, some uh, network engineers or you the management think hey there's no real threat to our company uh, we never been uh, we never been hacked okay and the other one is going to be the extreme way of looking at this uh, everyone's after me right you probably heard about this term as well so we will think like hey i'm going to be attacked you're going to be panic and um you need to i would say from my recommendation that you need to find a middle ground but what you need to remember is that based on some of the research that the study found that us companies took average of 260 days to detect the data breach okay it's actually this is the data from last year from 2019 and it has actually increased uh, 201 days from the previous years so that's the problem a lot of attacks that's been gone through uh, people have not been notified no, never noticed that they have been attacked for example if i take the equifax breach that we have heard about it and uh, that attack been simply been prevented if they have patched the system right so this is where we need to like uh, take into act actions when we are defending the networks we need to understand there's always a threat to network there's always going to be attacks towards our networks and we need to take proactive right we need to be proactive and make sure we take we we update our systems we we monitor our networks we monitor our traffic we monitor abnormal activities going on our networks so we know uh that we are protecting our network so and you probably have uh, learned about these terms on your introduction to security classes SLE single uh, single lost expectancy and ALE annual loss expectancy you could use this formula to calculate um to calculate the threats to your network and based on that you can uh, use that hey is it uh, is it is it worth to spend more money on security or the loss is very less and uh, depending on your organization that you don't need to worry about this much of risk but if you are handling personal identifying information you have intellectual property you need to be proactive you need to be make sure you monitor your uh to your tech your organization might face into possible attacks and it can be have catastrophic consequences so you need to make sure you protect proper actions based on based on your based on evaluating your organization's network infrastructure so let's now focus on type of attackers these are the terms that we describe different types of attackers uh, there are many more these are some of the common ones that we're going to look into the first one is called hacktivist right the name hacktivists came from because they are like a very well organized uh, they are very like minded hackers uh, they have some type of a pattern and tools and techniques they use uh, they do pose a serious threats to the organizations because their goal is to uh, gain uh, gain the resources get access to 
uh, attacks based on their gender. Okay. Again, the term is derived from hacker and activist, so that's how the hacktivist name came from. Again, the, they are mission, again, like I mentioned, uh, making some political statement or damaging organization's uh, structure. There are a lot of examples I remember. I can't remember exactly the name of the organization. Uh, they were uh, trying to take the Microsoft name down uh, related to something related to open source, and there's a hacktivist group uh, actually carrying attacks and trying to um, this um, to try to take the popularity of uh, one of the biggest uh, software giants, giants on the industry. So organized crimes, these are another sophisticated category. Okay, these are fall into this can fall into the state sponsors attack as well. Uh, they are mostly motivated by the profits, uh, which mean they are targeting the high profile data. For example, they might be going up to after personal identifiable information, banking information, uh, 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 banking information, and they might be using selling those information on based on the based on the demand on the black market. Okay, and they actually normally are uh, worked as a business. Okay. Uh, I've heard about like in different countries they have you go to work uh, as a, as a, and your job is to like break into systems and find valuable information. So the next uh, term is the script kiddies. You probably have heard this a lot. Script kiddies basically the term came term came from you don't know how to write your own malware. You don't have any coding skills. Maybe you have a little bit coding skills, so you you grab a malicious code and you modify it or use that use the codes freely available on systems like Kali and this online. There's all kinds of uh, attacking tools available. These tools are being used by script kiddies to carry out attacks. Um, and they are not uh, very sophisticated attacks. Uh, what about the nation state actors? You might again have heard the nation state actors there. So they are focusing on, again, they might be related to uh, uh, in specific countries, uh, they're motivated by the um, probably financial gain again. Uh, they are they are thinking about the national security, or they might even just like the activities we talked about, maybe a political espionage, or maybe military intelligence uh, attempt to influence. Maybe they're trying to influence another country's political process. Uh, those are the nation. Uh, state attackers uh, actually these uh, attackers are very well sophisticated they have they are, they are backed by some of the uh, countries so they are, have they are they have a lot of resources and they have the tools they have in-house programmers that can create their own malware and these guys actually falls into the advanced persistent threat group you probably heard about apt groups apt3 they all have their own names now so they can carry tell the attack right there they're very uh, they they don't create much noise so they they can main, maintain the persistent for a long time of period on a network and they collect enough data uh, they literally move on the network and try to blend in with the internal users and uh, uh, try to like not uh, raise any any flags uh, the last one i want to look uh, look into here is the inside yeah, insider actors uh, because the nation state and advanced persistent type group kind of go hand to hand. So what are the inside attackers? These are the most uh, harder to detect. Why they're harder to detect? Maybe it's the someone that you trust to work inside your organization, right? So you don't know uh, he's, uh, this person uh, is uh, stealing information, right? So what we, we just again, just like the ones before, they might not uh, trigger a red flag because they are within the net, they're within inside the network. They are doing the normal day to day jobs. So, your intrusion tools, your firewalls, they are all behind those, right? So, they might not um, raise any flags about they're doing any, um, any illegal activities. So, uh, that's why they are, as I mentioned, that's why they are harder to detect. Uh, these again, their motivation can be varied from financial grain uh, to selling intellectual properties to other organization. Uh, or again, like I said, they they create a challenge because their actions may be hard to distinguish from malicious to uh, regular uh, business activities. So this is uh, some quick summary of some of the basic uh, types of attacks you'll find these days.
Okay, let's now focus on the goals of network security. When we talk about network security, we need to talk about the CIA triad. Okay, you probably heard about this before. There's three goals, right, for cybersecurity, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Uh, for this is, the, this is, we can use this for our organization systems, networks, and data. So what is confidentiality? The first goal of the network security should be confidentiality, right? Because the confidentiality is protecting precise business information, the data, the data we talked about before, data in storage, data, data in motion, right, from unauthorized persons. So confidentiality should be a main part of your network security. Make sure that the data should be only available to intended authorized persons, okay? to access the business data. It should be only individual who are permitted, right? Let's say you have a human resource department, you have sales department. So human resource data only should be accessible by the human resource people on that organization, not by the sales department. So how could we achieve confidentiality? Confidentiality can be achieved by using encryption and access access control. Uh, we will look into how we can implement this when we go into accessing network uh, when we're building our network. Next uh, is integrity, right? Integrity refers to maintaining the data, consistency of the data. Again, this can apply to the data at rest and this can be applied to the data in motion. So we need to make sure our data is accurate and reliable. That has not been changed by unauthorized persons or hackers and data that received as the, exactly the same data that we uh, the sender was sending it to you. Okay, so we again will look into it. You probably have heard about integrity can be achieved by using hashing, digital signatures, certification, and non-repudiation. The last one we can look at is availability. The availability is the uh, process of making the data is available, then for resources, data, and network services are available and to legitimate users whenever they require it. For example, uh, we can look into uh, the transaction. If we need to access the bank, if I'm the right person accessing the bank, I should be able to use my credentials and uh, access to my bank information whenever I can, whenever I wanted to access my information. So that goes into availability. Availability can be disrupted by denial of services, uh, taking down the um, uh, servers, or it can be information uh, equipment failure. So remember, quick introduction to the CIA triad. Make sure you understand this. We're gonna talk about this throughout the semester and it should be applied uh, when we are designing our networks. So this is continuation of some of the goals that we are going to address throughout the semester. We will look into how to provide secure network connectivity. We'll look into physical security as well as we need to look into um, education, right? Educating the users that are using these devices. So we need to have user awareness training. So let's uh, a little bit go into a little bit detail and find out like what is, how can we provide a secure network connectivity? Like for example, let's say we have remote users connecting to our network to access the internal resources. We need to provide those users with way to uh, encrypt the the day encrypt the connections between outside network to our internal network so we should provide vpn and not only that we need to make sure we pro we properly configure vpn so if you never set up vpn access that's something that you're going to learn in this class uh, so we'll look into what are the protocols uh, that you can use to encrypt the data on a vpn tunnel um, what are the secure network protocols you should use as well as how can we uh, authentic authorize the proper users connecting to our networks uh, when they're connected to our networks, we need to make sure they only get access to the resources they are only intended to access. We don't want somebody remote end through VPN to have access to the entire internal networks. That can be a problem. Then we'll go and look into a little bit about defense in depth, right? This is where we are talking about the layering scheme. What is the layering scheme? So it means that we use uh, multiple different layers on our network, okay? The perimeter defense is not uh, not good enough these days. You can put a really good firewall, configure them properly, but what if the attacks originated from inside the network? What end devices being compromised by somebody plugging infected USB devices? Now, now there's a connection growing from the internal network to the, the command and control server outside. So we need to think about, think and apply the layered defense. So when we are applying layered defense, we're gonna think, we're gonna look into how uh, in integrating, uh, in implementing firewalls, setting up intrusion detection, 
intrusion system, network intrusion detection system, host space intrusion detection systems. We will look into anomaly behaviors, not only signature based behaviors, not going to be good enough. And we also think of, we need, also need to think about the zero trust technologies uh, currently in the industry on the cybersecurity. Also, we need to look into about the diversity, right? If we are implementing multiple different technologies, use different vendors, use different technologies, what's the reason? It's going to be hard if somebody breaks through one of these devices, the next, de next device is not configured the same way. So they, they need to learn that technology if they need to bypass that, uh, let's say that's a proxy server or firewall. So that's why it's very important to uh, have layered defense uh, diversity included in them and also make sure think about the zero trust as well and then we'll go into look into the practice in the least privilege right least privilege is giving someone only the permissions to do their job you don't give no more or no less okay so that's least privilege we'll look into how we can give least privilege and also we, we need to look into like right we are we have the data so we need to again think about the CIA trial not only that how we can provide the authentication of digital information, right? How, need, how can we make sure this is the right information we are accessing? It came from the right uh, pray, uh, right person or right... Uh, how can we prove it came the right person? This is where the non-repudiation came, right? We can use digital signatures uh, and, and encryption technologies to prove the origination of the data. So we knew it came from the internet party, not from a, a, a malicious attack, oh man, in the middle attack, somebody uh, somebody change the data or somebody act as the, the other person when they're sending the data. Then we go and look into physical security. We need to think about it a little bit, especially the, the written part of the project. You can talk about how you can achieve physical security for your organization, how you have access to users to your your company. Maybe you're using biometrics, maybe using key cards, like multiple ways to authenticate physically people getting into the system. And then we'll look into the policies and procedures that you need to integrate onto your project plan. You need to make sure you have proper policies, you have password policies, you have disaster recovery policies. We have a cert team to act upon if there's an uh, attack going on. We know uh, what what are the proper uh, steps that you need to take. Uh, then we need to think about educating the employees. So that's where user awareness training into, comes into play. So this is kind of like the whole um, cycle of the stuff that we're going to look into or when we're designing our networks throughout the semester as well as the defensive technologies that we're going to apply. So let's continue on the goals of network security. Um, we did mention a um, little bit about the proactive versus reactive. So again, that's where you need to make sure you continuously monitor, lock, look for unknown anomalies, and make sure your data is back up regularly. Uh, keep the data backup offline. Make sure your data is encrypted on backup offline so you can easily recover from uh, ransomware attacks and other types of data loss. Uh, then when we come to net network segmentation, what I'm talking here about um, where you can create different security zones. When you create different security zones, you can apply different types of policies between those zones and those modules. For an example, uh, we will create a uh, uh, we have uh, we will create on our network outside zone it's in, in, internet zone we will have intranet zone as well as we will have a service network so for an example on the service network we can put our publicly accessible uh, servers such as our public uh, public web server and we can apply different policies for those uh, those uh, zone and then we will have our internal network on our internal network we will set up microsoft active directory and we will set up a domain-based network and we will have a separate policy for traffic flowing outside from to internal networks. We need to make make sure we have re more uh, more restricted policies for internal networks where our critical data is there. This is where you need to identify your assets. You need to identify your assets and you need to, um, not, you need to label them based on their, their severity level. For example, let's say I have a database server with uh, personal identifiable information that should have a higher risk. That's where the targets for the attackers. So we need to label them and based on that, we can create policies, we can assign zones and uh, we can separate uh, those uh, ba also based on the roles and departments. For an example, we can within our internal network, we can create uh, VLANs and separate uh, our traffic between uh, our departments. Let's say we have human resource, marketing, sales. We can uh, separate those departments uh, on a different uh, subnet 
so the traffic doesn't see each other maybe because uh, we want to make sure the human resource has more sensitive files and we don't want anybody else's to maybe use a packet sniffer or something else on a switch to capture the data so we want to make sure they are separated by different zones so again that's that's some um, that's uh that's called vlan zones and uh, okay so we will uh, look into this and we will actually create different zones when we are um, building our network so let's now look into some of the network defense technologies and uh, these are not limited to so some of the things i came up with that mostly you can think of uh, first thing we need to think about one of the technologies is the password right some passwords are the weakest links on network defense technologies because people use weak passwords so what can we do to make the password secure we can enforce policies such as uh, using strong passwords uh, and using the two-factor authentications and changing the password regularly uh, and then making using the complexity password complexity method so those are some of the ways that you could use to uh, uh, use the some of the defensive technologies you can use against the password security and then we can look look into how can we provide uh, proper authentication right there are uh, authenticate bunch of uh, different ways so you can use authentication so uh, authentication is something the user know like we know it's talk about your passwords right and there's something that user processes then they can use like two-factor authentications like a uh, smart card or getting a text message or uh, uh, the type of uh, applications like Duo, uh, KeePass, there's multiple different ways to provide this uh, uh, type of authentication methods to do for the user. Uh, uh, then also we can look into um, biometrics, this is where you can uh, use fingerprinting, retinal scan and those kind of technologies. So, so this again can apply towards the defensive defense in technologies. Also again, I don't have this in the list. That's one of the things that you have to make sure is we need to provide operating system security against the uh, when you're defensing. When you talk about defensive technologies, we need to make sure we install proper operating system patches, make sure systems are up to date. Uh, any hot fixes, patches comes in, make sure you update them. Uh, stopping unnecessary services, disabling guest accounts, this goes on. Uh, also, uh, we talked about firewalls. We can firewalls are uh, going to the perimeter security, properly configured firewalls, and keeping them updated, so, uh, creating proper rules. We'll look into those as well. That's another defensive technologies. Uh, packet filtering. Um, most uh, networks, the first entry to your network from outside is a probably a packet filtering firewall. I will look into a diagram that I have designed to cover all these uh, technologies in the next slide. Uh, packet filtering firewalls. You can basically use. Um, uh, some access control list and we'll actually look into how to create access control list there are extended access control list standard access control list we can use some i won't consider access control list some packet filtering as uh, a way of uh, filtering it's kind of like a way of yeah it's kind of like a way of filtering okay because there's way to spoof and get through them but it's just still another layer that we are putting in between the attacker and ourselves and then we'll talk about we did talk about intrusion detection systems these uh, these things can come into play when you are um, setting up. Uh, normally, you put behind a firewall. Okay, when the traffic come in, you can put in in line, uh, in line or in line. Uh, that's a passive and active intrusion detection systems to uh, detect anything that maybe have missed from your firewalls uh, to detect any type of intrusion. And again, you need to fine tune this uh, device as well to uh, avoid uh, false positives and false negatives. Okay, and then um, then what we need to look into here is um, what's the next one? Uh, yeah, auditing, right? Uh, we need to make sure we need to do continuous monitoring and auditing, enable auditing on different devices so we know we monitor them. Say, let's say again, uh, this is part of the threat modeling, right? Threat modeling is a way of that um, you are categorizing, right? You're categorizing your critical devices on on your network. Uh, so you know which devices that you need to pay more attention to uh, when it comes to protecting your network. So that's basically the threat monitoring. It's like a proactive measure that we take uh, with, uh, during our monitor, product, and analyze. Okay, uh, this is uh, this can go uh, this can go into network auditing. So when you want to you want to you want to uh, enable auditing, and you want to monitor your critical network devices. Okay. Information hiding, this is where basically you're trying to obscure information, right? Somebody doing a port scan on your system and they may be finding the services running on the system. What if you go and change those banner information to false information to 
so the attackers trying to look gather information related to that and they're wasting their time so information hiding is very important and the design simplicity try to keep when you're designing things keep it simple and uh, more complicated uh, uh, systems are harder to evaluate and harder to protect it's easy to miss something so uh, break it down into small segments and keep it simple gonna help you uh, when you're applying defensive technologies okay on the next slide um, I have a design um, network diagram and we'll go over it and see how we can use that to get an idea of what's the overall uh, structure of the design part of this class going to look like. So what you're looking at here is a sample diagram of a network infrastructure and this diagram that you could see uh, that we have applied layering technologies defense in depth we talked about on our previous slide so what you see here is we have multiple zones for an example we have a DMC zone here we have a DMC zone here and we have our internal network over here so these different layers are separated by multiple different firewalls so we have like for example let's say we have a hardware firewall here and we normally will have a screening route out here on most networks right where you can access, uh, apply access control list uh, some basic packet filtering like we talked about it uh, in the previous slide as well then you will have uh, some type of a hardware based firewall here these are dedicated firewalls and only have firewall operating system less complicated depending on the model uh, most of the these days firewalls we will use the next gener next generation firewalls we'll talk about firewalls later but just to give you an idea of your overall project how it's going to look like this is something we're going to build you can on your service network you can include another firewall there okay and we're trying to write the layered approach like let's say this is a Cisco firewall this is maybe a Palo Alto firewall use trying to use multiple different technologies the diversity also we can have a software firewall maybe this is software firewall maybe this is a proxy server that uh, works in behalf of your internal networks when uh, when, the, when they have a uh, request for a website uh, this is where you have proxy server uh, do uh, you are requesting the DNS services um, on behalf of you where you can have blacklisting and whitelisting on your on your URLs from the internal service and then when you go further down here you will see we have multiple different departments we have research and development legal sales and marketing accounting they are all on their different subnets right they are all separated from different subnets so this is another advantage you can use VLAN to separate these subnets so the traffic's not gonna talk to each other as well also you will see the president and VP management like this is kinda like let's say threat threat management and the modeling that we have done uh, so we know that uh, again threat modeling we talked about it, right we are basically identifying potential security threats and vulnerabilities and we are trying to quantify them right we can try to find quantify the seriousness of like let's say this is the president and VP has maybe they have um, important information intellectual property in there so we prioritize uh, we quantify that that's critical data and we prioritize the techniques that we're going to use so we add another extra layer of firewall here just to make sure uh, the critical data are protected with another layer so in here we are using layered defense technologies we are using um, layering we are using diversity uh, so most networks will have a firewall and uh, service network internal network and this is going to be your internet uh, this is going to be a internet this is going to be the public network so a quick overview uh, of what we talked about so far uh, throughout the uh, throughout this course you will get to uh, build a sample network similar to this uh, not uh, we're not going to use multiple devices maybe we'll have one firewall one uh, device on DMC and we have we will have on the internal network we will have a domain control and one device because it's it's going to be harder to virtualize all those things if you don't have enough resources to be a fully fully scale network but all the structure the the standards that we're going to use can be similar to large organizations as well Okay, so hope you have a clear picture of here. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, ways to improve this. This is a, just a standard diagram just to show you guys on uh, what we just talked about so far. When you're talking about network security, you make sure you are aware of, aware of some of the laws pertaining to network security. There are multiple of them, but the common ones that we're going to look at it here is the one of the one is the Computer Security Act of 1987. This act requires that government agencies to identify sensitive systems uh, that conduct computer security training and develop computer security plans. Again, this law is vague 
Okay, it's a uh, make make sure that may they mandate the federal agencies in the United States to establish, establish security measures without specifying any standard. Uh, another one here, another act here is the uh, um, SOX. Uh, SOX stand for Sarbanes Sarbanes Auxiliary Act. Okay, and then this is the law that governs that any trading companies that store and report uh, financial data they need to keep the data secure. Uh, is that's one of the most important part of this uh, act and there's much of uh, more about this act but I'm just gonna give you like kind of like a basic uh, overview of it and I'm sure all of almost all of you are familiar with the uh, HIPAA that's the health insurance portability at and act and accountability this is basically directly implying the computer security because the the system that handles the personal information, right, personal identifiable information and health information, uh, they need to make sure that this under this policy, uh, they make sure that the data, uh, personal identifiable data and health data is being protected um, uh, according to the specification and the guidelines. So to end this chapter, let's look at some of the impact of the defenses, right? So if we does not have proper defenses and uh, defenses and policies in, uh, implemented, uh, the security breach can cost uh, a lot of money on restricted on investments. Like uh, not only that, think about the reputation. A lot of companies will lose their reputation if they've been breached. Uh, and I'm sure you were aware of, like, like for an example, I always worry about why uh, Equifax is monitoring my credit if they can protect the data, right? So that's kind of like losing the, they're losing their reputation, they can lose money, they can lose the business, okay? Uh, another, uh, another important aspect is like, you need to always get the management approval and support. That's very, one of the hardest part when I work on the industry that I always that have, it's very hard to convince the management, the upper layer, for them to like make sure, like them to get approved the budget to get the new security devices. So. Uh, to have a comprehensive security support and plan. Get them involved, right? Make sure you involve them. Uh, all the different departments need to be involved and it should be shared governance on all these uh, security issues that we have. And again, getting the funding, right? They're getting the funding and resources to uh, properly integrate and invest on your security uh, and protecting the devices, having the people, time, power, and the time. Those are some of the impact, that some, not even impact, some of the, 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 the barriers that we have in information security. Uh, again, we need to make sure the security systems are continuously monitored and maintained and updated. Like, if you have multiple devices, imagine how many log files that you have on your system. How can you monitor log files, this amount of log files? How can you uh, actually see if it's an intrusion of false positive and false negative? You need to think about those things again. That's where, uh, like, um, monitoring system, centralized SIM, centralized incident and event management system comes in, you collect all the logs and send to a central location and maybe you have a playbook and threat intelligence coming into play to help on this. And again, these this things take money, time and people uh, to implement them. So again, think about all these things at the end uh, when you are thinking about um, some of the impact that kind of go uh, towards the uh, defensing your networks. So in conclusion, make sure you uh, understand some of the network technologies that we talked about and make sure uh, you uh, you pay attention to the networking technologies we talked about. And then we talked about um, network intrusion, the attacks against the network. We talked about uh, network security concerns. We talked about uh, different technologies that we can use. And then we went and talked about goals of network security. We talked about CIA triangle. We talked about uh, how to like different network technologies that we can use uh, to protect our networks. We also talked about uh, layered defense. We talked about a lot auditing and monitoring as well. And then we talked about the perimeter defense a little bit and that's not only good enough. We need to have um, diversity, zero trust. And we talked about threat modeling a little bit. And then we talked about um, the defenses that affect the entire organization, right? There are, what are the impact on the organizations if you don't have proper defensive technologies? What you see here is some of the resources that I used, uh, uh, book uh, resources related to the book that we're using. It's um, published by uh, Pearson. So we will be using Pearson resources. So I am citing that I am using some of the Pearson resources on, uh, on our, some of our assignments. And the book is, uh, 
uh, the Chuck Easton is the author of the book. Uh, the book can be purchased online or you can use, uh, if you have uh, or really access on your school, you should be able to use that book. Okay. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to email me. I will include my personal email on, on our course uh, information page. Thank you for listening for this lecture. Um, again, now uh, let's jump into the next uh, chapter. We will be starting start using some of our hands-on practices.